This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present Spidey Super Stories. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined by, always, joined as always, by my co-host, the marvelous Mr. Mike. Hello there. Hello. It's been a while. It has been. It's been a we, couple of weeks. It has been. We've yeah. been busy. We had lots of stuff come we up. We had yep. lots of stuff yep. come up. I got older. You did. Um, Happy birthday thank to you. you. I think we already talked about Comic that. Comic loving boy. But I am so uh, much a egomaniac where I want us to talk about me more. So okay. thank you yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. What did you do for your birthday, by the way? Um, Party? Yeah. Parade? Like it's 1999. Oh, yeah. So you went cheap and you went to the dollar store and got a <laughs> yeah, bunch of stuff from we, 1999. Yeah. Yeah. No, that and also we just did things that we would have done in 1999. So. Yeah. Sure. We went to Blockbuster and we rented movies. Right. Backed up your computer just in case. Uh, yeah, because, yeah. you know. Y2K. It's coming. It's going to kill yeah. us all. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? Th- I, I talked do, about that buddy, there I recently do. of I just how yeah. everybody going and panic buying water and everything. Was, we thought planes were just going to fall out of the sky. Yeah. We, I, I, well, and the, the stupidest thing is we didn't really think about well it's going to be 2000 here first and then there and then there it's not like it all would happen at once anyway yeah so we would yeah, like whatever. the thing we would have a head start of knowing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from what happened on the other but side. this was a time when the internet was was just gaining foothold and getting big you know and so we didn't know what was going on yeah but well, no not my, my 4086 or my ibm whatever is going to go down on me Oh, your are 8086. Your Sorry, it was an 8086. Was it? Yeah. I had... I worked on them then, and it was it was rough. We I don't know if we... It got very that. hot. I think... No, we had moved to Windows 98 by then. Mm. Uh, I remember, though, the... <laughs> remember installing Windows 98 in 2003? <laughs> was... I always feel like my family was a little bit behind, though. So it's like... Oh, every what, what's this uh, Windows 8? Yeah, we're still on XP. Or what, was it Vista? Yeah. So there was one between those, and it was like Windows. Um, God, it wasn't XP. What was it? it there was, was like something a else. 2000 NT it was like, or something like that. It was that. like NT or 2K or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and God, that was the worst operating system ever. I remember buying a, a computer with that operating system on it, and it would consistently blue screen on me, like once, twice a day. Yeah, it was that's rough. A pain. Did rough, you rough, change rough. it back to the old operating system or just deal with I it? I just went to the next one or whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, you would think you would learn. I've had them all. Speaking of learning, Mike. And all the, all the see, see that yeah. little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See where we're going. Um, there's a show yeah. that I assume was around to teach kids. Yeah, it was. A bunch of different things. And that show was you the assume, electric company. You assume it was around to teach I did, kids a bunch of things. Here's the thing, Mike. You know how much research I do on yes, all of this? Yes. I did zero research on the electric really? company. All right. Because I figured you, were, you would be able to enlighten us on the electric you were, company. You were relying on me, huh? I was. Okay. All right. That's a that's a rough thing to do, but sure. So um, I know that the electric company and Sesame street are productions of children's television workshop. Yes, absolutely. But, um, I assume that they were to kind of teach kids how to read things like that. Just, uh-huh. just school skills. So it would be like a Sesame street type show of just, well, um, in- infotainment for kids. It, in a it way? was definitely infotainment. Um, so, uh, the electric company was like, Okay, so if you think of Sesame Street as like those Jack and Jill go up the hill books, you know, Golden Reader kind of yeah. thing, right? Uh, then Electric Company were chapter books. So it okay. got a little more, it was tween television basically is what it was. So is it also though, like did it have to do specifically with reading? No, no, okay, okay. it was it was all over the place. There were... Okay, so at that time, there were three shows. There was uh, Sesame Street, which was for babies. I'm not watching that. And then Electric Company, which is my kind of uh-huh. my kind of show. And then there was 321 Contact. 
And three, two, one contact was all science. So three, two, one contact, three, two, one contact, contact is the reason is that, you know, and all that it's, it's this big theme song, but they would just do science stuff, oh, okay. which I enjoyed also. So is it, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to make you sound old by saying this, uh, but is free. it, is it the equivalent of my Bill Nye, the science guy that I would watch on yeah. PBS after school? Y- yeah, but it was more of a, a group approach to it. So okay. like the kids were discovering science and Billy's Got good it. at, Billy's good at splicing DNA and Jenny's good at, at copulating that- with plants. I don't know, whatever. Hold on. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. Uh, hang on one second. I got something for you here. I okay. want to make sure that we go into this with the right frame of mind. Um, you know, one of the most important parts of these shows were usually like the, the theme songs. Yeah. So that was a big deal to me. Hey, you guys! I thought that was from Goonies. Before. Does this oddly? I think it you oddly the reminded me of Gonna Fly Now from Rocky here at Actually, the beginning. Actually, I want you to see this one, though. Oh, okay. You know who this guy is? I can't see from here. Yeah, I couldn't see. So, My eyesight's not the best uh, from that distance. So, Electric Company was uh, had a character named Blackula. Uh <sighs> And uh, let's see, let me, it, it is Morgan Freeman. It was the no. first time I've ever seen Morgan Freeman was on the electric company. No. Yes, absolutely. Uh, E-L-E-C-T-R-I-C-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y. The electric company. Uh, yeah. Uh, so here we go. Morgan Freeman as Count Dracula on the electric company. Yeah, but he was Blackula on the electric company. Like that's what so it was it was so weird like like he was a cast member uh-huh. you know like that i'm assuming that was one of his first like tv gigs or whatever it was before he became super famous. famous uh but yeah that's where i remember seeing him first uh and then he went on to do all the stuff he did but electric company was so weird because it was basically a skit show uh like snl or something but mm-hmm. for tweens and then all of a sudden hey look there's spider-man so you do remember yes. Spider-Man oh, being in oh, this? Oh, hell yeah. But okay. he was never called Spider-Man. He was called Spidey. That also makes sense then that mm-hmm. why these mm-hmm. are called mm-hmm. Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present Spidey Super Stories. That's it. That's it. And I'm assuming that they only had the deal to call him Spidey. They couldn't call him Spider-Man. I didn't know that until you say yeah. that. But on the cover, he's called Spidey. Yep. And yep. now I'm yep. going to look when we go through this. I think you might be right. I bet it was a licensing thing. It was. Well, I did read that um, in re, I guess, uh, like collections that they, you mm-hmm. know, the republications of these shows sure, sure. that a lot of the Spider-Man clips and skits aren't in there anymore because yeah. of rights. Things. Oh, I don't doubt that. And they, so, were, they were rough, too, dude. I mean, it was like I watched one on the way here yeah. just because I was like, let me look to see what these were because I didn't know if they were animated. Yeah. And the mm-hmm. one I watched was him trying to eat a rubber glove yes, sandwich. Sure. Sure. So, yeah, it's high humor back in the 70s. Rubber glove sandwich. Yeah, that was good stuff. Spider-Man sitting on a yeah. a street corner just looking at this rubber glove in between two pieces i don't of think bread. he spoke either no i don't I'm, think he ever spoke well i thought because a lot of these stories there's like, a lot of pantomime you know like oh you know overacting yeah so kind of thing. a lot of these stories it's always a very short comic book as seen on electric company <laughs> spider-man's stuck in a glass box no it does Let's say Sp- okay it does say spider-man yeah. oh, does? meets okay. on the okay okay but so what I did was I captured what well, they, I thought were some of Spider-Man's weirdest villains. Yeah. They were very big on the friendly neighborhood uh, moniker. Like, you know, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, they would say, he's your friendly neighborhood hero or whatever, right? That was their big thing. And I think they were, again, trying to make Spidey cool for these kids yeah. or whatever. Well, I think what they did, so these was books, garbage. There's there were like <laughs> 60-something, maybe more issues yeah. of these. yeah. Um, I went through and I just collected the, what I thought Good. were the four best stories there out of go. these. And so we are going to look at some of Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present <laughs> Spidey Super Stories. This and the first fantastic. one we're going to get to, Mike, is I would say a villain that obviously nobody talks about but is a very big deal. 
And our first one, a very short comic book as seen on the Electric Company, Spideyverse. Mr. Measles. Mr. Measles. Mr. Measles, oh. who Let has who Mr. has Mr. a bag of spots. Yeah. So so this um <laughs> so uh, this is very much like laughing. Uh, you know what I'm talking about when I yeah, say yeah, laughing. Yeah. You know, like the old '60s show. So we were we were very much in this transition from slapstick stupid humor from laugh-in slash political slash all of this stuff and then we were transitioning into the 80s but we had all these leftovers and so somebody like mr measles look at this guy he is basically in a cape and a top hat with a big bag that says spots that's the <laughs> whole costume right that's so, the whole bit <laughs> yeah so you have to think this was the oh, cheapest yeah. villain they could come up with we've already got these things go out there and be a villain so, uh, and then somebody drew it. The second best thing is it says <laughs> it says a very short comic book. Yeah, I thought you were just saying that it no. literally says that these comics are only like five pages. Oh my god! Uh, the the uh, so you said this was so teens. I still feel like this is a weird thing. Maybe it's just because tweens. Oh, I'm sorry for tweens. Yes, maybe uh, it's just m- me, and I shouldn't think like <clears throat> this. But I think this is an odd place for him to have his hideout it does say in his little room next to the pickle factory sure the pickle factory is named pops plump pickles pops plump pickles boy oh boy if you've never had a pickle try pops plump pickles that's really hard to say i couldn't get it out (laughs) but it's just like a smiling pickle there, just like hey much much like pops plump pickles i couldn't get it out yeah oh oh look at him standing there he is he's just a big old pickle the uh, evil mr measles is essentially trying to come up with a way to rule the world (laughs) evil mr we don't know what he's doing we just hear him say ah yes finally i'm going to do it I have a million measles spots in my bag. <laughs> I'll throw these spots at people and they'll get the measles. Why does he want everybody to get the measles? Then, what is that, how does that help him? Then everybody will have to stay in bed in the dark where they can't read. So he's just anti-reading. He's anti-reading. And uh, to push his anti-reading agenda, he's going to spread measles. <laughs> So I That's thought you would appreciate it. Why didn't you just make everybody blind? Uh, no, because yeah. measles. Well, he, he didn't think about that. Is he just going to give them measles again after they get better? I guess. Yeah. Just, he didn't think that all the way through. Uh, but he says by the time they get better, I'll rule the world. So apparently, he just needs like nine days of people in bed to take over the world. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's just he's just he's just slopping these measles everywhere. Just just throwing them out like and confetti. Then he, has, he has a tagline as he leaves. Watch out! Here I come. Have you had your measles shot? Oh boy, that is catchy. <laughs> yep. So essentially, Spider Man's just swinging through when all of a sudden I'm gonna make you itch. <laughs> <laughs> when all of a sudden his spider sense goes. Uh, kind of haywire, and he sure. looks down and sees Mr. Measles with his bag of spots threatening everybody. <laughs> and uh, he says, too late. I'm going to fling my bag of spots at you. And he just starts <laughs> throwing measles at yeah, people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to fling my bag of measles at it you. Says, yeah, it's like you, you'll get the measles and have to stay in bed. You can't have books, magazines, newspapers. Because you can't take those things in bed. No. no uh, journals. Knows that. No. Um, mm-hmm. uh, scrolls, pa- yeah, ancient text, pa- pa- pap- papyrus, papyrus, no papyrus font, <laughs> even though it kind of fits with scrolls, sure, tablets, tablet, oh, not, not, no, like even... stone tablets, stone they tablets. Have, yeah. sure, 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 um, yeah. uh, home computer systems, no, I don't know what's all there, but really you can't read yeah. anything. Wait, when do you know when this came out? Um, it's in the 70s, I think, I, it has to be 70s. Everybody's wearing bell bottoms. I think it's late. I think I could be wrong. I looked yeah. it up when I, I want to yeah, say it was late, you. like it's, 76, 77, like, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking like somewhere between 76, 78. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's about. So everybody has all these red spots on them, and they're like, mm-hmm. spots, I have the measles. Yeah. Me too. And then he even, he even gave my car the measles. <laughs> my shopping bag has the measles too. Dude, that's just, that's just die. It's just, a, yeah, it just threw a spot at you. Yeah, no. My shopping bag. And the Yikes. and the uh, car has the measles. That's great. So Spidey swoops in and essentially tells him to sp- uh, stop, not spot. Tells him to stop, and he goes, "Spider Man, my enemy." Because yes, we all know that mm-hmm. Spider Man's greatest foe, or one of them, is Mister Measles. Mister Measles. Yeah. So he comes down. Spider Man does to land in front of Mister Measles, and Mister Measles tells him that I'll fix you 
what are you going to do about these spots? You know, because he's right. a typical villain, right. throws him at it. And he essentially just kind of slings his web uh, and takes the bag of measles spots away from him. And then he kicks him in the butt. And Mr. Measles says, you win this time, creepy crawler, but I'll be back. And then it just ends. But did Spidey uh, But did Spidey really beat Mr. Measles? What do I see on my hands and arms? Oh, no, it's spots. It looks like 10 days in bed for me. The itchy end for the next 10 days, anyway. That's how it ends. So Spider-Man beats Mr. Measles. I would think that anybody throwing measles. measles at him, uh, he's kind of sealed. You know, his eyes don't stick out. His his mouth is not visible this like Batman or anything. This is such an aggressive form of measles, though, Mike. It was able to infect oh, cars. Oh, gotcha. That's true. That's true. That's true. So, Bags, cars. A suit is nothing. Horses are really screwed. Um, I think that now is going to be you the best. You ever deal time. with a horse with measles? That's rough. Are you being serious? No. Okay. Of course not. I've never. No. I don't know that anybody's ever dealt with a horse with measles. We're going to get thing? emails about that. Can Email horses us if get you have. measles? <laughs> huh. You know, we're going to look into that. And while yeah. we do, I think it's the perfect time for us to take it a break. It is a good time. Yes. yes. We'll be right back. Mr. Measles. Welcome back. Hey, during that you, break, you, we you, I did look up. You found that horses, horses can't, can't get, get measles. measles. Wow. Horses can also apparently spread germs. You can get sick from horses. I don't know if you can get measles from the ho- from yeah. a horse who has it, but probably. Yeah. I get uh you, you can get uh horse foot in mouth? I no, just horse foot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your foot turns into a something horse hoof? that looks like a horse hoof. Well, Mike, uh, instead of focusing on those poor mizzle ridden mizzle ridden horses, let's yeah. look at Measle another Measle. Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present Spidey Super Stories. This one is titled <sighs> Let's Hop Along, Lads and Lasses, as Spidey Fights the Funny Bunny. The Funny Bunny. As seen on the Electric Company. Again, we've got this bunny costume. What can we do with it? Based on the Electric Company script by Tom O. Whedon. So there you go. Tom O. Whedon. I can't, I can't read it. I just had to. Wow, read. that is the creepiest looking bunny I've ever seen. So essentially, Spider Man's just at home. It says our friendly neighborhood Spider Man is not only a hero, he's also a very good reader. There's also a, a grown man with a receding hairline with knee socks. Oh, yeah, on. no, that looks creepy. Wow. Okay. Um, but Spidey reads the headline of the Daily Bugle that says, Funny Bunny strikes again, but who is this Funny Bunny? And then we get a uh, callback. Mm-hmm. It says, the Funny Bunny was a nice, normal person until a bully set on her Easter basket. Oh, no. And she got the measles on her And butt. so I turned to a life of crime, stealing from kids' Easter baskets. So this is a very time-sensitive criminal. Yes. Only Once during a year, Easter. Yeah. So, also, the bully who sits on her Easter basket, it's like he just, flay, he's just going to, you know, ground pound like he's Mario, just straight tailbone first into that thing. I force. don't understand. Uh, so, we I, see. Aren't you just getting an ass full of raw eggs or, or boiled eggs? Boiled egg, raw eggs? <laughs> I mean. You know, <laughs> They're just putting raw eggs, eggs in her poor Easter Boiled basket. eggs smell way worse than raw eggs, I know, too. but still. Uh, what is that smell? Oh, it's a guy's ass. It smells like boiled well, eggs. So we see the funny bunny creeping up on uh, creeping up on that creepy dude in has socks. Yeah. And the gal that we saw earlier. She and, is dressed like uh, Dottie from, yeah. uh, or Dot from the comics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she looks like a grown version of Dot. So they both walk up to each other and they go, like, guess what's in my basket? And I'll guess what, you guess what's in mine. And they cover both their faces and one guesses jelly beans and the other guesses a chocolate duck. And they both start and they're making both like, out. They're both like, oh, you're right. But they look down and there's nothing in their baskets because <sighs> why they have their own faces covered. Oh, my like God. Like, they're covering their own yeah. eyes. The funny yeah. buddy steals everything in their basket. Instead of holding the basket behind your back. So you cover your own face. They've been robbed and they want mm-hmm. to call the police, mm-hmm. obviously, because somebody stole my chocolate duck. By the way, uh, these are grown people, grown adults. I mean, I don't know if they're supposed to be kids. They look like grown adults saying things like a chocolate ducky. Yep. 
Very excitedly. Uh, Spider Man's trying to figure out where the Bonnie, uh, the Bonnie, the Funny Bunny is going to pop up next, and then he finally it hits him the Easter egg roll on the White House lawn. <laughs> so okay. he catches the train from New York to Washington, <laughs> yeah, and somehow gets onto the White Wait, House. Spider Man gets on a train. Yeah, he just rides the subway. Go? Okay. Right. Um, now the president tells them that hey, first one to cross the line will win a chocolate bunny. And they're getting ready for the race, and they start to do the egg roll thing. What does the president look like in this? Do you see her right there? That's so. That's very progressive. That's I will what give I'm them saying. That. Late '70s, we had a, a black woman president. Yep. Wow. Okay. I was very, I was impressed by that. Electric company. Good job. Yeah. Very yeah. progressive there. Yeah. Uh, but she explains the rules to them. Of uh, you know, first one through crosses the line mm-hmm. gets the. Uh, chocolate bunny. So while all the kids are sitting there rolling their eggs with sticks, I've never really understood the egg I roll thing. That um, the funny bunny uses that to go through and just try to steal stuff from people's Easter baskets. He or she, I'm sorry, it's a she that's the right, funny bunny. Right. She they. springs. Uh, well, they. Uh, sure. She springs on this girl who's participating. <laughs> yeah. But Spider Man is able to catch the funny bunny in his web, uh, and the president. Uh, thanks spider-man and says good work young man you've been a great help to your country and then all the kids are like hey this is a real bunny you promised a chocolate bunny <sighs> let's split wait real bu- like the evil one yeah real bunny yep and they sp- assumed that this giant man in was a costume prize? was a chocolate bunny well, it was a woman in a costume these are dumb was- children <laughs> they are and then how Spider-Man, did they get on the White House lawn? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> and then Spider Man just kind of leads the funny bunny trapped in a the headlock? web. Oh no, the web just like leading it behind, <laughs> you know, leading like the bunny leash. behind him. Yeah. But it's with like um, Lou Ferrigno or who played actual David Banner in the. Uh, it, it was uh, oh shoot, I can't remember. His the name, Watts but is, I know you're talking about what's yeah. his name energy in the like the hitchhiking scene yeah. at the end. Yeah, that's the same kind of energy they have walking off as the president just asks, "Who was that in the red and blue suit?" Like they look so sad and defeated, it's just ejected. Do you, walking do you remember the away. the Hulk thing where he throws a bear? No, you ever seen that? No. You should look that up sometime. Lou Ferrigno, as the Hulk, throws a full-grown brown bear through the air. It's a fantastic, okay, fantastic great thing to watch. Oh, boy, is it. Almost as great as the end of Nightmare on Elm Street with the dummy. Yeah, where, he, where his legs go. <laughs> yeah, 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 like you see it turn mm-hmm. into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about like that, but uh, it's obviously got a bear suit. Gotcha. That he throws. All right. So yeah. now... I'm going to have to check that out. God, thank God Spidey is around, right? Know, right? He stopped a bunny. He stopped measles, kind of. Now we have Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present Spidey Super Stories. Going to give you the Spidey power. up against the wall. Uh-oh. And oh, this one has says, to do with, Is this? Okay. Uh-oh. Go ahead. I'm as sorry. seen on the Electric he Company. He fights Pink Floyd. No, yeah, this one. That is that what cool. happens? Okay. I'm assuming because all of these say as seen on the electric company that these were skits or somehow at one point in time. Yeah. But I, it's all lost media for the most part. I love part. the fact that they say from a based on a script by this guy. Yeah. That script was it's an index card <laughs> is what that is. Get in front of camera. Be stupid. Okay. There you go. Done. Oh, man. It's great, though. So. Oh, my God. Uh, it's, it's a guy who's a brick wall. like a effing N- wall. No, they're not dressed, Mike. I'll go ahead and get into their tragic backstory for you. <laughs> Spidey has the day off, so he's going to a Mets game in his costume. Because yeah. that's what Spider-Man would do. Well, while Spider-Man is trying to find his seat, there's a guy who is actually part brick wall that is hiding. This guy. I don't know how he's hiding. Is made of eight very large bricks. So eight to 16. Very large bricks. The wall was once a happy high school student mm. with an after school job. <laughs> Look at Spider-Man with a baseball hat over his costume. So uh, and then somebody it. says, more cement, Joshua. More what? More c- cement. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just misheard you. <laughs> more cement, Joshua. And then the walls came tumbling down. <laughs> the That blast turned that happy boy into a wicked wall. Wait, what happened again? S- apparently, just a bricks fell on him while he was holding a bag of concrete, I think. Sure. That's, I mean, yeah. you read those two panels and tell me what else you can come up with. Uh, the wall was once a happy high school student with an after-school job. Uh, why is why is he dressed like a scientist building a wall? 
Uh, then the walls came tumbling down. Boom. That blast turned the happy boy into a wicked wall. Wow. That is, but there was no blast. That's a, that's a hell of an origin story there. Yeah. So now he's a giant wall. Okay. And what happens is, and he's he's just there because he's planning to wreck Spider-Man's day off. That's mm. that's all the wall wants to do. Really? He doesn't want to conquer the world? Nope. So it's the sixth inning. Score's tied. Let's go, Mets. Uh, it just says a speech <laughs> bubble. I assume that's Spider-Man yelling yeah. that out. The batter hits a fly ball, but there's no need to go to the wall for this one as it shows the outfielder running up to catch it. And he says, I've got it. But wait, the wall is coming to him. Oh, and the no. brick wall runs and just hits him. And the ball also goes over him. So the other team leads by a home run now because they hit the ball over part of the human wall. I want to I want to explain to anybody who's listening. This guy is made of, of 16 large bricks. I, it started from eight. He's doubled in size now. That look. What? I thought you said eight the first time. Oh, no, no I did. And I, I uh, anyway. Um, the top brick is his head with his face kind of almost sticking out of a brick. But this MF has human legs. Yes. And nobody noticed him in the outfield of this Mets game. Until he ran and hit the yeah. outfielder. And just by doing so, the ball travels over him. And they're not like, hey, it didn't cross the actual wall. They're just like, it crossed one piece of wall. Home run. He has like blue uh, swamp on. boots yeah. on. You know, those kind that you wear into water. Like wading boots. Yep. Nobody noticed. So, Spider-Man does. He goes... Well, Spidey lets this walking wall. Oh, will Spidey let this walking wall lose the game? It's the wall, and he doesn't play fair. How does Spider Man know who he was? So, um, I, I do remember another thing now that you're reading it that way. Uh, there was always somebody like, Will Spidey do this? Will Spidey get circumcised? You know, or whatever. Right? So, that's what those little things yeah, are. Yeah, it was always an announcer. Yeah. It does always say the rule book says that getting knocked down is not funny, is what the umpire says. The rule book says getting knocked down is not funny. Okay. To which sure. the wall just runs into him and says, No one can stop the wall. <laughs> These are just panels right after each other. Yeah. I am not skipping anything. Yeah. yeah We're yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah. And then it shows Spider-Man swinging in, and all he just says is, no one. So let me just go over mm -hmm. the three phrases, because mm -hmm. it's by three different people yeah. in each. Umpire, the rule book says that getting knocked down is not fun or not funny. Mm -hmm. The wall, no one can stop the wall. Mm -hmm. Run in, thwomp. Spider-Man, no one? Like, it's just very, um, yeah, there, yeah. yeah. See. Does that help yeah. it make any? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I'm, I'm sure that the the uh, writer here was the most sad because they only gave him so many panels he could work with, right? He's like, I've got this enormous story about this man who turns into but a I brick gotta wall, get it but I got to get it, I got to get it down. So Spider-Man tries to crash into the wall, but just uh -huh. bounces off of uh -huh. it. Uh, and then. Because it's a wall. Yeah. And then he decides <laughs> to wind up like a pitch. And he throws a giant thing of web at him, and he captures mm -hmm. him in a web. And then the ump says again, the rule book says that only players are allowed on the field. I'm kicking you out of the ballpark, Spidey, and take that wall with you. And both of them dejectedly walk away. Once again. Like the, like the bunny. Spidey and Funny yeah. Bunny. And uh. it just ends with the two of them sitting on a park bench outside. And it says, too bad, Spider-Man. And Spider-Man's just sitting there, hand in his, or head mm -hmm. in his hand, mm -hmm. saying, I wonder who won. And that's how it ends. I guess oh. they're best pals now, just sitting yeah, next to each other. Yeah, now he loves the wall. You know, God forbid he get uh, he, he team up with Door oh, or Window Man. Oof. So our last one of these, these beautiful things, Mike. God almighty, who is writing this now? Uh, that garbage. Was, uh, all these. Well, I don't want to say it, but they're all based on the electric company script. By it's Tom garbage. It, it really is. Come on. This is dribble for children. I mean, this is pablum. Spidey as seen on the electric company. It just mm -hmm. says Spidey on this. Spidey one. doesn't say anything about Spider-Man, but yeah. let's just hope Spidey can stop laughing long enough to trick the tickler. <laughs> the tickler. It's hard to fight oh, when you giggle. Man. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Mike, it's a man who has feathers tied to the shoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, look at if you were, you just need some rubber gloves. We got this bowler hat. Uh, the guy, big pants, got it. Okay, you're the tickler. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but the tickler wasn't always the tickler. How is he tickling Spider-Man with feathers through his suit? I don't know. The tickler was once a joke teller, and he went by a joke a teller. A joke teller. And that's what it says. Not a comedian. A joke teller. A joke teller. Who couldn't make anyone laugh. So It's like a fortune teller, but jokes. Yeah, so he turned to a life of crime. Yeah, that's how that he works. He became the tickler. I make people laugh while I rob them is kind of his mm -hmm. uh, modus mm -hmm. operandi. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, Every once in a while, I get peed on a little yeah, bit. He asked this. <laughs> but that's just because I'm into it. That's, right. uh, <laughs> that's, it. that's what the rubber gloves are about. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. So Water sports, he, man. He walks up to this woman <laughs> and he goes, hey, want to hear a joke? What do you call a 400-pound canary? <gasps> You call him sir. Wah, wah. And the woman just goes, taxi? Yeah, yeah. To as, which, as anybody with a brain should. To which the tickler says, you didn't laugh at my joke, but you're going to laugh now. And so he tickles her while he robs, uh, steals her purse. Okay, this is assault. Yep. This is what this is. <laughs> then along came a rich banker. And he goes, oh. care to hear a joke? What do you get when you cross a tiger with a head of cabbage? Mm-hmm. Man eating coleslaw. Wow, these are good. To which banker doesn't laugh. Where is the? Do, do you think there's like a? Uh, you know, there's there's the NFL Hall of Fame. There's the Baseball Hall of Fame. All that. Do you think there's a, like a joke Hall of Fame? Because I'm thinking these are first ballot. Oh yeah, no, they're great. Um, he doesn't laugh, and he's like, "Fine, what about this?" So he tickles him and steals his briefcase full of money. Mm. Here's our our last great. That well, is well, the well, way you get a rich banker. Because they're always tickle. carrying all their money in, in, a, a, brief in a briefcase. Case. Oh, for sure. If you can just get that briefcase. He comes across a woman who's carrying groceries and says, what kind of ant is 10 feet tall? A giant. Boy, oh boy. These are, this is. And she goes, well, giants do get very tall. This is bad for like Bazooka Joe. Yeah. This is bad. And so he's like, then laugh this off. And he tickles her and steals her groceries. Uh -huh. um, luckily, Spider-Man spotted the greedy giggler. That's what it says. And he's like, the tickler, I must stop him. The giggler is a better name <laughs> than the tickler. Than the tickler. Yes. Uh, I'll just sling a web. Oh, no, my web shooters are empty. Uh-oh. The tickler turned to crime because people didn't think he was funny. I don't know how Spider-Man already knows this. And he goes, maybe he'll mend his evil ways if I laugh at his bad jokes. He probably heard a couple of those stupid-ass jokes. So he swings in, and the tickler goes, hey, you in the mask. Want to hear a joke? Why does a duck have web feet? And the tickler says, because if he had a web head, he'd be Spider-Man. Wow. Yeah. If he had a web head, he'd be Spider-Man. And Spider-Man laughs. And he's like, he's laughing. I won't say crank is dumb. Crank? But that's what it says. I won't say crank is dumb, but he threw the clock out the window. What the what because the, he wanted to see time fly. Who the hell is Crank? I don't know. And Spider-Man's just laughing at all these. And the tickler goes, they love me. I'm a star. And he goes, wait, you haven't heard all my jokes. And Spider-Man's there with his hands over his head. And he just says, or hands over his ears. And he just I've says, heard enough. I've heard enough. As the cops take the tickler away. So I just wanted to make sure that we covered the great, Jeez. great rogues gallery of Spider-Man that was Mr. Measles, uh -huh. the Funny Bunny, uh -huh. the Wall, and the Tickler. Yeah, yeah. There's your super team right there. That is, uh, boy. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Well, I it was a simpler time. I it, can tell you that. It was. Um, and uh, even as a kid watching this, I didn't think it was funny. Oh, okay. So I don't know why I watched it all the time. I think because like I that? felt like I needed to. Oh. Uh, it was very important television <laughs> it was on right. at the time or something. Well, I just thought that, like you said, those were up your wheelhouse. And plus, I thought they were just ridiculously up your funny. Up your, uh, did I say that right? <laughs> it's okay. I don't care. In your wheelhouse? Doesn't matter. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, sure. Eh, anyway. All it right. was great, man. Good job. Well, thank you. I'm glad you appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys listening did, too. As always, feel free to shoot us an email, bros, foes, and heroes at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out roguemedianetwork.com. Gonna do that thing. Hey, roguemedianetwork.com. Mike was too busy singing to pick up the cue. You're back. Company. You're going to go watch Electric Company. Yeah, probably. Well. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> well, as always, we appreciate you guys taking you guys taking Just the time out guy. to listen. The Just one guy, one guy, Jeff, I think we're back on good <laughs> Thanks, terms. Jeff. 
Uh, <laughs> until next time, though, stay safe, everybody. Got it, God! Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. This has been a Rogue Media Network 